Dr. Caldwell, I've seen uh, a couple of your videos in the past, and one of them I thought was interesting that you said every cancer can be cured in two to six weeks. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that, and, and what are some of the ways that, that that's possible? The, in my experience, every cancer can be cured in two to 16 weeks. Some cancers can be cured in minutes because every doctor in the world that's in office for 20 years or longer knows cases of spontaneous healing. There's even a book out called Spontaneous Healing by a guy I really don't like, and um, uh, just stating that there are cases of spontaneous healing. That means if it's possible, we just have to find a way to access this. That's number one. So we all know about these. Uh, it also happened very often when people go to Lourdes or to, to these religious mm -hmm. places, and, and it's not really the place that cures them. It's the expectation and the way to that place that cures them. The second you get rid of acidosis and toxemia, the second the body gets alkaline and oxygen rich, with juicing a lot of greens like chlorophylls, everything that's green has a lot of chlorophyll, gives the body a lot of oxygen. Getting your body alkaline with, with good calcium, with good nutrition, with good trace supplements, uh, trace minerals, will help to alkalize the body. So that means the second you are alkaline, the cancer already stops. It can take a couple of days, a couple of weeks, but it stops. You get the, the body to a healing pH level, which the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, so 7 is neutral, and you need to be slightly alkaline. 7.36 is ideal. But in the healing phase, you should go up to 7.5. It's a bit, little bit over-alkalizing, the system. A great friend of mine, Dr. Uh, Martin in Germany, he is using... Uh, oxygen more step therapy, for example, where you take the blood out, get ionized oxygen, and you leave the blood back in, and you do this 12 times, and you have basically brand new blood like a, like a newborn baby. So you already eliminated the lack of oxygen. You see the blood coming out looks like black. They put the oxygen in, and it becomes pink. And it's like mm -hmm. legal doping. You, you get it, and you <laughs> feel so energized, and you're so vital. And um, there are, uh, we know basically with what I used, my, what my MDs in, in Europe used uh, is uh, vitamin C injections, intravenous vitamin C injections, 100 cc's a day, um, three times a week. Uh, that's what we used in, in certain cases more often. And very often, believe it or not, in my personal experience, the tumors or the cancerous growth was basically gone within a couple of days. And because vitamin C is so powerful and one of the greatest healers out there, you can ne fix nearly every heart problem, cardiovascular problem with, with vitamin C, they want to take it off the market. So uh, it's basically it's going to become a prescription medication and then it's synthetic and will not work anymore, like vitamin E. Vitamin E basically helps you to cure uh, very easy and fast uh, blood pressure problems uh, in any way, shape, or form. That's why they, they, they made a study with artificially created vitamin E chemical created vitamin E you said, see, it doesn't work. No, of course not. <laughs> Chemicals don't work. Nature works. Mm -hmm. If nature creates a problem, nature creates a solution. Very simple and easy. If it didn't exist 100 years ago, you don't need it today. It's very, very simple. And um, when you want to help somebody to educate themselves to eliminate his or her own cancer really, really fast, I would basically start instantly with a vegan diet or with a raw food diet. My friend Paul Nissan is one of the greatest uh, raw food chefs. He has a fantastic books out there about raw food, so it's accessible for a couple of bucks how to do it. He has free videos all over his website. Mm -hmm. And I would go instantly on a raw food diet. I would go uh, make sure if I don't have a very rare kidney disease to drink a gallon of water a day with half a teaspoon of sea salt in it a day because we need salt for every body function. We need electricity. And this electricity can only be um, uh, produced with enough salt, basically. So okay. if, if you have a lack of salt, you have a blood pressure problem. See, and we're not supposed to have salt, though, too, especially if we have high blood pressure. That's what we're talking about. Okay, it's the opposite. <laughs> the problem is they are talking about table salt. Very often, table mm -hmm. salt is one-third glass, one-third sand, and one-third salt. So this, the glass or the sand is scratching the arteries, and they start to bleed. So now cholesterol goes there, 
to stop it from to make you survive, to stop it from bleeding, so that you don't bleed to death internally. So now they say the cholesterol all of a sudden is the cause of the high blood pressure because it narrows the, mm -hmm. the blood waves. And uh, that's completely absurd because you die of not enough cholesterol. You do not die of too much. There are people with a cholesterol of 600, perfectly healthy, never been sick in their lifetime. So what do you do with a, with a, with a patient in a burn, burn unit? You give them 20 to 25 hard-boiled eggs a day because they know only cholesterol can rebuild brand new healthy cells really, really fast. Nearly 87% uh, of a cell is built from cholesterol. So where does the new cell potential or foundation come from if you have a lack of cholesterol? Everybody should have at least 250 combined cholesterol. And then they tell you uh, LDL and HDL mm -hmm. are good and bad cholesterols. It's not even cholesterol. It's a protein that transports cholesterol. So they are too stupid to even narrow it down the right way. So if you look at the facts and if you look what they know and what they don't know, you know that uh, Dr. Gary Nall stated it and a lot of other people, the medical profession, the medical doctor statistically has the shortest lifespan of 56 years of age, the highest abuse rate of alcohol and drugs, the highest suicide rate, only the psychiatrist is higher. And uh, so you go to somebody that has the lowest lifespan, highest suicide rate, highest drug abuse rate, to ask them how to have, have a healthy, healthy. happy, uh, long life. Yeah. Uh, I think we should rethink our way of thinking.